All right, we are now on version four. Still working. We'll solve the general formula to find out how to build these. So this is the current version right here. And here's the first one that we had. That one is the very first one. It's very reliable. And I like that one. Uh, I think we're going to build more of these. Only thing it doesn't have is the ability... Oops. Only thing it doesn't have on this one is it wasn't built in for built-in worm right there. This one, the worm goes in here and there's a top shaft for the idler. Now the thing on this one, we started, build, we started building in, let's see if you can see on the one I got down here. We started building in the capability for our worm box. And that would be the little jab right there. Then we've got to start thinking about how we're going to mount the frame here. Because on this one, there's not a good turning radius to have the frame mount right there. Which means I would like to, I'd like to rearrange some of that stuff. This worm, the worm that's going to go here, could go here, could go here, could go anywhere along here. And we'll work, work that out later. But what we've got is the ability to do this. Now what was the, what was the key? To getting a, a, a working truck. Key to getting a working truck is small is, is sub assemblies. And the key to sub assemblies is centering them in a rectangle. So I've got three. That's one reason why my worms are all all their shafts are in, are in a straight line. I centered them all. That seems to be pretty good. I don't see right now a reason to put a gear up here like you see in, in other locomotives. Um, then the reason I think that they do that is because it's easier to assemble by a person. Um, it, it certainly doesn't add any reliability to it. This one here is very reliable. Uh, the thing is, I, I suspect this one might be kind of slow because of the number of gears I use, and it keeps getting caught on that magnet over there. The magnet keeps on uh, grabbing onto it and pulling them. There it is. And let's take a look top down on it. So, this three gear combination means. I can put, so I can come down with an idler gear, worm, idler, and then my gearbox, this group here. Axle, axle, another group. I can do this again. I can keep, I mean, there's, there's really no limit to the number of these that I could do. One of the things there is a limit to I found out that the first set of copper wire I use for shafts has got to be 12 gauge. Because here's 14 and my shaft, the holes here, they're a little wobbly. That, and it's okay to have some, some uh, it doesn't need to be super tight tolerance. In fact, the tighter it is, the less reliable it is. Because even though these gears are Delrin, they are not true. They are as true as you can probably get. Uh, but they are not, they're not identical. So you got to have some tolerance in there for them. And these, these axles, these, these are Atherin ones. And their gear in the center is, they vary. From, from axle to axle, they are not the same. I mean, it's just a tiny little bit, but adding in a little bit of tolerance will help them be more reliable. We don't want to introduce slipping, but I'd say we're getting pretty good. We're getting good to go. Pro probably fifth, sixth generation, and we should have 
have the ability to put our frame and connect up a motor to it. So we're getting very close. Very, very close. Looking good. These, these trucks are feeling good too.